All righty. So one of the things that I discuss pretty frequently, if you if you come to these, is the idea that we've got our two separate editors, right? You've got what you write in your posts and your pages. This is your content. This is where your ideas live, your videos, your images, your media. Anything that comes from you, for the most part, lives in these dashboards here. Um, with the new site editor, though, um, this is where your theme is structured. So how things appear, your colors, where they appear on the screen rather than what you've written. So one thing that we ran into last time that I really wanted to address because we're going to be looking at pages and making effective pages is what to do when your, your theme, your block theme, like my theme, um, if you click into it, you'll notice that there is content in this site editor, right? So this is just the sample content here. Um, and I really like what they've done here. It's part of the reason why I, I picked this, because I do think that this is a very effective home page. Um, but for those of you who are super new to the space, didn't attend last week, I think it's really important for you to know that whenever you are working in appearance in editor, this is your site editor. Uh, you have a pretty high probability of losing anything that you write here. So if I decide to change this, help us protect our animals to, let's say I'm starting a business, Sarah's bird visiting service, um, and I end up changing themes, anything that you write here will disappear um, if you switch themes. So this is something that I'm seeing uh, often with some of the new block themes is that they've designed it in a way that encourages you to write in your site editor. So one thing that I think is really important for everybody to know um, is what to do when you're like, wow, I really love this theme. This is a block theme. It's really cool. Um, but it wants me to write <laughs> directly in this editor here. So we're going to start by uh, creating a home page today. Um, has anyone else seen this? Like when you go to your themes, have you seen this in the past? Yes, no. Does your theme have you writing more of your content here? Or does it have you writing more of your content in the poster pages? Is this just like a me thing or is this a you thing too? <laughs> just curious. <laughs> have you seen this before? Yay or nay? Okay, so Laura's not seen this. That's okay. She's using 2023. Okay, cool. So some people are saying, hey, no, I've never seen this. Or yeah, I have. Um, but I think it's something to really be aware of. And one thing that's interesting about the 2023 theme is that there's a, a couple of lines in it. Um, I'll actually show you. There's a little bit of this in that theme as well. So let me switch to that really quick. So this is a block theme. And if I go to my editor here, um, you'll notice that if I scroll down, come on thing, scroll, um, it's got some content here, like get, you know, do you have any book recommendations <laughs> in here? Um, or this mind blown, a uh, blog about philosophy, like this is something that would disappear, um, when I switch themes, right? So, you know, if I write a heading here and it's just a heading, um, you'll notice that it is the heading block here. Um, you can tell that because of the H1 and guys, no, sorry about that. My neighbors are outside. Um, you'll notice that when I switch my theme back, what I just wrote is going to completely disappear. So we're going to talk about that just really quick because I think it's really important. Um, so if I head back to my appearance, let me switch to a different block theme, activate, if I head to that site editor. That is completely gone. So that's what I really want to impress upon you is when you are writing in this editor, it's really important to just use this for structure as much as possible. So what do we do about this? Rather than writing in the site editor, um, Sarah's bird visiting service, you'll notice that that didn't transfer to my other theme. How do I write this in a way that my content sticks? Um, so an effective home page is one that will transfer from theme to theme. Um, and some of these themes prevent that. So what we're going to do, and you're welcome to do this along with me if, if you would like, um, but we're going to use our pages editor here. And we're going to start by creating a place to move the content that we just saw. So I'm going to head to pages and I'm going to add two new pages. And the first one is going to be my home page. Um, this is where I am going to write my glorious home page content. Um, my thoughts, ideas, images, media, anything from my head or computer generally goes here. 
So I'm writing a little bit of this so that you can see how this is going to transfer. So this page doesn't look like anything special. This is it so far. That's okay. That's expected. Now I am going to write a second page just because I want to have a page for my blogs to live as well. It's just kind of one of the things. I don't like to leave things blank. So I'm just going to write blog, publish. This is going to give a space for any blog entries to live. You do not have to do this if you do not want a blog, but that's okay. So our first step is completely done. We've added the blank home page. We've added the blog page. We are now going to head down here to our settings and we're going to head to our reading settings. And this will allow us to change our home page um, to display what we want it to. So I want to switch this from, hey, my latest blog post, because this is this is geared towards um, four page websites, right? And I want to make it a static page. So a page that doesn't change with new blog posts for the most part. So those two pages that I created, I'm going to set the home page here. And I'm going to set my post page to be my blog here. And this is about to set us up for success. So we've done that. Make sure that you scroll down to the bottom and save those changes. That is step two in creating a strong home page that can transfer from theme to theme. Now, part of the reason that I picked the theme that I picked is because I really liked the way that it was designed, right? Like I want um, what is on those home pages to actually <laughs> appear um, on this home page. So the first thing I want you to notice is that when I click on this home page now, I've set it as my home page. Anything that I wrote here is not appearing, right? It's showing what is in the site editor. So that's not good because if I click on edit page now, remember this is our page editor, not our site editor. Where did my ideas go? Why is this not on my home page? We want you to like it, it's this content is what transfers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head back to our editor. I'm going to go to appearance and editor. And I'm going to click into this home page template, right? Because this is what is now showing on this page. So I'm going to open up my list view here because this is going to allow me to grab the main content from this beautiful home page because I really like this right like I think that this this is a very eye-catching photo I love this cover block um, I really like the way this is laid out with the left and the right like I want this to to become something that I do I don't want to have to completely build this from scratch right that's why I picked this theme so I'm going to use this list view here and when if you're brand new to this, you'll notice that we've got a header, a group, and a footer. And these two things, your header and your footer, these are template parts, right? So these are the very top and bottom of your theme. Um, and we've, we've addressed these in previous sessions, so you definitely want to uh, find those if you're like, whoa, what are those? Like, that was covered at a, at a later point. You can also see the beautiful links that uh, Catherine is dropping uh, in there as well. But what I want isn't the top and isn't the bottom. It's the main content of this page. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to select this group. I'm gonna press these three dots to the right and I am going to copy this. And then I'm going to do something a little scary. I'm going to remove it entirely. So this isn't very pretty yet, that's okay. We're gonna come back to this in just a second. We're gonna to move to step three, which is going to be to take what I just copied and move it from this site editor here, which does not transfer. And we're going to move it to our pages editor here. So I'm gonna take this and I've got my home page here. Here's my front page. I'm gonna go back and edit it. And now I am just going to control V underneath it. And now you can see all of those blocks that I chose this theme for now appear on this page. So you've got my content up here. Hello, this is my glorious writing. This is the content that transfers between themes. I'm just going to keep hitting that point home. I'm going to click update. Now, if I view this page, we've got one last step. You're going to look at it and be like, wow, that is, um, there's not a lot there. What's going on here, right? Like I, I just edited this page. If I click on edit this page, this content is here. How do I get it to show up on my home page the way that it was before for the reason that I picked this theme? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head back to my site editor. So I'm going to head to appearance and editor. This brings us to my beautiful block theme. 
I'm going to click into this front page here. And I'm going to open up my list view one more time. So right now, this is, this is uh, WordPress is saying, hey, I want you to show me whatever is in my header template part, which is way up here, um, and is also showing whatever is in my footer. What I want WordPress to do in this block theme is pull the content from my pages editor and throw it on this page. And I definitely want that in between the header and the footer. Um, so this theme is a little weird. Its header has like a, an interesting transparency. There's something weird going on here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these three dots. And I'm going to say, hey, I want to insert something after this. Um, and this means that I'm not editing this header template part. I'm not editing this footer template part. Template parts, if you make a change to them here or in their template part section, they ripple across the entire website. So now what I want to do, I'm going to use my inserter here. And I'm going to switch over from patterns to blocks. And I'm going to look for the post content block. So this is a theme block. <laughs> that will pull whatever post I have designated uh, into this editor. So theme blocks, if you're brand new, um, are basically ways that you retrieve the information um, that you wrote before. So whatever your, your navigation is, your whatever your site logo was set as, um, if your post has a featured image, if you wanted to pull an excerpt from your post and pages dashboard, this is how you draw that into your website. So now you can see some of us, some of my content has been pulled in here. I can now save this. And now if I view my website, here we go. I'm visiting my home page. You'll notice, hey, <laughs> there was my content here. Something interesting is going on at the top that I'm probably going to have to play with. Um, but everything that I, I selected uh, from this theme is now on this page. So if I switch themes now, this content is going to switch with me. So I'll show you that really quick just to really like nail this point home just because there's it's so important, I think, and such a best practice that I think is a, a kind of a newer one. So let me let me switch themes to the 2023 theme here, just so you can see this. And if I go back to that page and I view my home page here, it's displayed differently, but all of that content is still there. So <laughs> I think tip number one is just to make sure that you are writing your content in the right uh, in the right place, especially for your home page, just because you do want anything that you write, anything that comes from your head, you don't want that to get lost um, in the theme switch. So are there any questions about that so far? Like I just, I, that is so important. We definitely got stuck on it last time, um, but I, I, it is a way that you can utilize this in a way that uh, serves you and, and moves things. See, Catherine has been dropping wonderful links that give additional information on this. Anything you'd like to add, Catherine? Are you good? I think that was pretty clear. Hopefully it was clear to everyone. I don't see any questions. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> so I just really wanted to, to start with that just because it was very confusing to me in front of everybody last time. Um, so step number one, put your content uh, in the right place. So now let's let's get interactive here. Um, when you're starting to think about effective pages, so this the goal of this is to have four pages: your home page, your about page, your contact page, maybe a services page. First off, what is your website topic, and what is the goal of your website? So, trying to think about, I try to use real examples for these. Um, like I have a friend who I do her website, and she owns a cleaning service. So the goal of her what like she so. Her website topic is her cleaning service, like all about that, right? And the goal is to bring in new cleaning customers. That's what she told me she wanted when I set up her website. Um, a lot of business websites are gonna are gonna be about that, right? So they're either to bring in new customers or they are to uh, give information to repeat <laughs> customers. But what is your website about? Answer in the chat box. And what's the goal of your website? We'll start there. Getting clients to your website. Yes, getting clients. That's a goal. What's the topic, though? 
I know there's a, another training team member who is building a training website for like how to build websites um, with mobile. So I think their goal is to share information. Other, other topics, other goals. Building websites. Yeah, it's a great topic. <laughs> Bringing in more volunteers, bringing in book presentations. Yes. I think if I were making one for the training team, our goal would be to probably like aggregate, bring in new training team contributors. Any others? You're quiet today. That's okay. <laughs> um, that's okay. So I want you to really keep your website goal in mind. And I want you to think about how you build what we call in <laughs> English class, ethos, pathos, and logos. And these are appeals to your credibility, appeals to emotion, and appeals to logic, right? So when you think about um, your credibility, um, what, like, what are those? And it's a really good idea to generate some examples of that. Um, so like, for example, my, my friend who has the cleaning business, she has, you know, been in the business for 10 years, like that, that builds that ethos. What else has she done? She um, brings in, like, she mentions like the background checks that she does um, for each of her users testimonials reviews yes testimonials and reviews are amazing credibility for that um let's see um interesting or being of interest to readers yep okay i love that just trying to think Okay, so let's let's move on to emotion. Laura's starting to do that. So we also want to talk about building emotion. So emotional appeals in your writing. So um, it's interesting. So Laura, we're we're going to talk about that in just a minute about like where do these go on on each of your pages. So how do you connect to people emotionally for your topic? Um, so blogging, just general blogs could do that. Um, I'm trying to think where you'd see that, like on a on the cleaning page. Um, gosh, I feel like I should, in retrospect, I should have had a graphic organizer for this <laughs> so that people could like actually write out like what was, what what is it for them? Um, but like, if I'm thinking about making a cleaning website for somebody, right? What, something that might be um, appealing to someone's emotions is, hey, like picture your house, dirty, disgusting. Like maybe there's dog hair everywhere, which is a problem that I have in mind. And then like that, that evokes a feeling of kind of disgust, right? Like it's a little bit of an anecdotal story. Um, but then I'm like, now imagine it like sparkling clean, head to toe, like no dog hair anywhere. Like everything is put away. There's a place for everything and everything in its place. Which one makes you feel better? Um, images showing a house before and after a cleaning. Yes, images can be very, very powerful for pathos. Love it. <laughs> so these are all of the different things. Um, the last one is logos is logic, which is a, a logical appeal to things. Um, and what you really want to do is you want to, to build effective pages. You want to use your credibility, your emotions, your logic here to, to really tell the story of your user. And I'm going to fix this up in just a quick second. I meant to put animations on this. Jumping ahead of myself, y'all. Bye, paragraph. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> oh my goodness, see? It didn't do it that time for me. Maybe that time. Maybe that time. So when you're building your pages for the first time, um, I'm going to refresh this page. So you can see that I've built my home page. Um, I have a sample page that I'm going to trash because I don't need it. But as you're, you're starting to think about your pages, I want you to think about the story of your user. So we've got a home page, we have an about page. Woo! Home, about, and then what did I say? Services. And a contact page. So for each of these, 
you really want to think about the mix of your logic, your credibility, your your emotional appeals. But more than that, you want the story, you want to kind of write a story of your user. So if we just have a four page website, the first question that I have for you to really deeply consider is, what do you want people to do on your homepage? And how do you want them to feel? So I want you to think about your user journey. So what do you want a reader to think and feel on this front page? Trying to think, of, I was really hoping we'd have more like concrete examples that we could share um, so we could talk about that. Um, just have my one example though. And I feel like, hmm, I feel like I should have approached today differently. That's okay. <laughs> um, Laura's given some really good examples of things like that, but. Does anyone have an idea? Like, what is, what is your homepage supposed to do specifically for your audience? So Anne says, use hers, a blog for a memoir editor. Okay, blog for a memoir editor. So this one for Anne's, it's not a, a, a four-page business website. It is an actual blog. So on a blog page, let's talk about like blogs versus business pages. Um, what should your blog page do? I'm sorry. Let me back up. <laughs> I always get flustered when we don't have as many people typing, so I apologize. Okay, so it's a business website as well. So your homepage needs to do a couple of things, right? It needs to, Laura said, build a first impression. Yes. Um, it should also do a quick overview of all the pages in your website. Um, and it should also probably build your credibility as a developmental editor, right? So you want to think about like what topics could you bring in for that? What builds that credibility? And John says, yeah, so if you're if you're starting a, a website that's not necessarily fully business, it's also partially blog, you also want to have it be a little bit entertaining. So that's when those those um, appeals to emotion come in. Pain points of memoir editors. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I love those pain points. So and that's a really good example of something that is it is an appeal to someone's emotions. Right. So on your home page. Let me go over here and click edit. I'm going to demonstrate this just a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this information at the very top. Um, but you'll notice that there are actually some pain points in this example here, right? So for this sample website, um, it talks about poaching cases versus rescued animals versus volunteers, right? So these are some pain points. Um, and I really like that this... Um, I really liked this one because it did a lot of things as well. Um, but these poaching cases, these rescued animals, like it's very, very clear. Like you don't have to go in depth. Like I don't have to have a commercial with like lots of sad, <laughs> sad animals. I don't have to have a picture of somebody like a, a, of a poached animal here to evoke the feeling um, of wanting to rescue, of wanting to volunteer. So it looks like the purpose of this one um, is to bring in probably even more volunteers. So. Yeah, okay, so you guys are coming up with a lot of really great things. Um, so pain points, testimonials, credentials, yes. So this this is a very personal thing. So let's actually analyze this one, this homepage, and let's, let's talk about the mix here of everything. So I'm going to just preview this rather than, so the first thing that I notice here um, is this really big picture of this parrot. Um, make your photos look brilliant, weaving feathers. One thing that I really like that is is very effective to right off the bat is this call to action. Hey, using this theme, make your photos look brilliant. You've got this call to action button right here. So one thing that you can do to create an effective homepage is to use this cover block here um, and, and put in a call to action. I wonder actually, so I'm going to use this WordPress.org pattern directory here. I wonder if they actually have 
examples of calls to actions here as well. Ah, they do. Okay. So we'll come back to this in just a second. But it, it starts with that. Um, so whatever the goal of my website is, the very first thing that I probably want to do, if I'm using this theme in particular, is put whatever I want people to do on my homepage, put that here. Um, so you'll see this a lot. You'll see donate buttons. You'll see contact me buttons. You'll see things like that. That's usually front and center of what people want to do. So when people do this, the first question that they usually have is, well, why? Why should I do that? And that's when they start scrolling. And here's where we start to mix um, our credibility, our uh, um, appeals to emotion and appeals to logic. So here they started with poaching cases, rescued animals. Those That's definitely a an emotional appeal. Now we have art and numbers, right? So I really like this one because it's, it's this simple four column block here. Um, and when you see numbers, the first thing I think of is logic, but this is also logic that builds the credibility, right? So for this example, it says, hey, we've got 768 photographs, we've done seven or 47 projects, we've won 124 awards, and we've used 13 lenses here. So this is using logic to build that credibility. So you can see the blend happening here. Um, and then, it looks like this last one here, um, this is supposed to be featured posts. I think this actually is, I'm gonna take a look at this. Um, I think that these are just placeholders here. It looks like they want to use a query loop, but what does this do for you? When you look at these featured posts, is this building credibility? Does this giving you um, an emotional reaction or does it, does it speak to the logic here? I'm just curious. When you look at this, what do you think? Is it more logic? Is it more emotion? Does it build credibility? What are your thoughts? What are your impressions? Mel says that it builds credibility. Yes. So one thing that is really important to know is that writing posts relatively frequently, or at least consistently, um, that does build your credibility. It shows that you are active. It shows that you are engaged. Um, it also shows that you are an authority on the subject as well, which builds that credibility. Yes, there's that authority. So I think the key takeaway from your homepage is that you really do want to have a really nice balance between the logic, between the credibility building and between the, um, what am I trying to say? What's the last one? And the emotion, the emotional thing behind it. So yeah, that that's kind of the, the key takeaway that I want for this first page. <sighs> um, and I think that if you were to build a journey for yourself, um, you would probably want to consider what you want to reach to think and feel on your homepage, your services page, your about page, and your contact page. For each of these things, you really want to guide that journey. So, oh, no, go back, go back. <laughs> there we go. So for these, um, what is the balance between your credibility, your logic, and your emotion? Where do you think that credibility should be highest? Which page? Give it a guess. And why? I'm just curious. Where should your credibility be highest? Which of these pages? Victoria says homepage, maybe. John says homepage and about. Jean says front page. Oh, interesting. These answers are surprising me. Tell me more. I think that the front page, you really only get one chance to make a first impression. So when you're working on your homepage, that is probably the one that you want to spend the most time with. But I've also definitely seen some home pages that have just been absolutely stuffed with credentials. Like, I'm so great. I've won this award and that award, and I've done this and that. And here's here are all of my user testimonials. Is that helpful or is that off-putting? I'm just curious. What are your impressions? Hmm. 
my thought, if you're typing, that's fine. But my thought was that maybe it should be on the about page, right? Because like, I think, I feel like on the home page, and this, this is just an opinion. Um, and I'm, I'm curious to hear what yours are too. So keep typing if you're typing. But for me, I feel like the home page is almost a little bit of a teaser. Right. So it's, hey, like, here are the most important things that you need to know. Find out more. So when you're you're designing your homepage, rather than being like, I have been volunteering forever and I have won all of these awards and da 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 da, I like to like hint at that because when I'm on my homepage, I don't want someone to just bounce off right away. I want them to discover more. So your homepage can be strong enough that immediately someone would, you know, jump to your contact page, but more likely I want to direct them to my about page. So that was my thought, but y'all are making some really good points. So Jean's saying, hey, if you don't seem to be credible from the front page, people will go no further. So it's really, really important to probably spend the most time um, on that front page. Anne says that um, she loves testimonials, but that she's willing to look for them um, on their own page as well. So, hmm. So, so Anne, for your user journey, person, probably the people for whom you are writing a website where testimonials are important. So should they have their own little section? Or could we just tease it? So if I were to work on this on my homepage, you, you all are saying, hey, I want some testimonials here. Um, I might put some, rather than featured post, I might change this to testimonials here and be like, hey, here are my top three testimonials. And then maybe add a button down here that says, hey, see what else people are saying and actually be brought to that as well. Interesting. Let's see. And Laura says, but what can you do for the client? Needs to be about the customer, not the company. Oh, I love that, Laura. That's such a great point. So as you're designing your home page, not only does it need to be a wow page, but it needs to be like you, your focus really needs to be on the customer and on the reader. What do they need? What do they expect? What will draw them in? Because I think that the primary purpose of your homepage is for them to actually go somewhere else, go to your services page, go to your contact page, and you can direct their experience that way. So Mel has brought up a great point. The details on your credentials clearly belong on the about page. So it's almost like maybe on your homepage, you have a couple of these um you, you you talk in broad strokes right so it's it's the teaser but the details like if this were a real website the details about the poaching cases and the rescued animals and the volunteers that information that's in the that read more so one thing that i really like here is to use the button block here um to to draw people in specifically to read more and that would probably be in our about page Um, which I haven't obviously created here yet, but I really like that idea. What a great thought. So generals go here, details go on the about so that people can dig deeper if they want. Um, and we had, let's see. I like it. So admin is saying that the, the home page is more about the client and what they want and need. The about page is more about me, the company, the person, the writer behind this website. That's a really good way to frame that. Okay. So we have a question, which is a really good question. Let's talk about that. What is the difference between a front page and a home page? Catherine is answering that question. Home is not technically home page. Home is a WordPress specific template term. Home page is the front page of a website. So let's go back to our site editor. So to get there, we head to our dashboard, head to appearance, and then editor. And if you have a website, I encourage you to open this up um, and head to your templates because you might find some really interesting things here. Um, so, for example, this page has both a front page and a home page, um, and one of these supersedes the other. So, you can see this here. Um, your front page is the number one website, uh, 
like is the number one template that takes precedence over all other templates. If this front page exists, this is the first thing that people are going to see on your website. Whereas your home page, huh? This is interesting. So I would have expected if I were to build this theme, this would have a, a front page and then a home page. But in this one, we have our front page as the front page and the home page is, is apparently my blog page. So when I went and I set this in my reading settings, so we did this earlier under settings and reading, when I set my post page to be blog, apparently the home page via WordPress is what displays those blog posts. Got some really great conversation going on here. Okay. And so, yeah, so WordPress developed this way over, I guess it was what, his 20th birthday the other day? Was that on Sunday? <laughs> um, yeah, so this has evolved over 20 years and naming things is really hard to keep it consistent over 20 years. So that's some of what you're seeing here. So when, I mean, once upon a time, when I first started making websites, um, when I would hard code HTML and my template was like the home page used to be index. And apparently that has evolved over time so that your front page is your static front page and your home page is the one that displays blogs. Not only that, can I chime in with one more? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> because the site editor now makes it possible to put whatever you want inside any of these templates, it's even more confusing because you can put a query loop on any of these templates to display blog posts. Whereas mm -hmm. before the site editor with classic themes, you were locked into displaying what your theme was designed to display. So yeah, it is the hot topic, Laura says. Um, and like, Anne, I just want to say, you know, you're so spot on this. This is what we call a legacy thing. As Sarah was saying, it's a, it's a historical artifact that makes no sense when you look at the definitions of these templates today it's like why why is it called home if it's not the home page it's, it it makes no sense so you know if anybody finds this confusing you're not alone and there's reasons why it's confusing um but at least these little blurbs were added here in the template editor you want to just click on one again just just so we can see these little descriptions yeah. of each template were added more recently so that if you forget what one of these things does you know, you can read this, even though even sometimes just reading it is still confusing. Um, mm -hmm. But at least the definitions are here. Uh, if you want to remind yourself what they each do. Okay, and and rant. <laughs> well, and I think that's such an interesting point that you're making too. So for example, if we look at my front page right now, I'm going to click into it. Um, I'm going to open up my list view because like, you can see here, um, this is saying, hey, this is bringing in the post content. The way that this theme was designed, it's got some overlap on it for whatever reason. So I can have my post content here, but I also could do something like say, hey, I want to put just a couple of blog posts on this page as well. So we had the, the section that was kind of placeholders. It wasn't actually blog posts, but I can select, as Catherine was saying, a query loop here and say, hey, I just want to put I don't know. I want to put a couple of blog posts at the very bottom of this. So anytime I write a new blog post, it automatically appears below this post content. So I'm going to save this and we're going to go view it to see what it actually looks like on the front end, um, just because this is it's so interesting. So you can see that this is um, what's coming in from my page editor, right? So I just left the site editor. The page editor itself has all of this stuff. Um, these aren't actually featured posts, and I know this um, because I'm, I'm using my list view here. And you can see all of these different columns. These are just images and paragraphs. <laughs> so these don't update. But what I could do is say, I wrote a new blog post. I could feature these and use this and then just create a link to that Hello World blog post or whatever other blog post I have so that these are the featured ones. They're not going to update with everyone. You'll notice there's nothing at the bottom here. But if I go back to my website and I go to the very bottom. Oh, am I just on that? Hold on, let me go to my homepage. <laughs> I should have a query loop here. Why is it not showing? What? Oh, fascinating. I think I might have found something that is 
Oh, you know what it is? I didn't set the right thing. So one thing that I that I've learned through trial and error on one of these is that um, you can't just set a query loop in your templates like this. Um, there is an option here that I need to select here. I don't know why that is that color, but over here in my settings, I have to make sure I have query loops selected. I have to disable this inherit query from template and then it will show up. I Someone could tell me why if they happen to know, um, but we're gonna go and now we're gonna view this page. We're gonna scroll to the bottom. There it is. There is my query loop with the text that is apparently only showing up on highlighting. I would have to play with my global styles there. But now if I write a new blog post, hello birdies of the world, publish, publish. I can now head to my homepage and you will see that, hey, all my content on this front page has stayed the same. But now, Hello Birdies of the World has updated there as well. So that's what Catherine was saying about how, like, you can put anything anywhere now. And that just didn't used to be the case. Um, there are almost as many ways to do things with WordPress as there are stars in the sky. So figuring out what works for you is probably just the most important thing that I, I can tell you. The way that I design websites may not be the way that you design websites, and that's okay. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> back to our topic with our front page here. Um, I like the idea of teasing. I like, I like not teasing, but like kind of previews for everything else on the website, right? Um, and this even has kind of the previews here with these featured posts. So I can make each of these um, link to a blog post. So these two I haven't done yet, but this one I have. So I, I can make sure that this post is always at the top here. That's one way that you could do that. Um, I feel like your services pages is kind of, I don't know, when, when you look at a website for the first time, where, where do you normally go first? So obviously you land on the home page first. I feel like usually before I hit services, I go to the about page, but maybe that's not true for you. When you visit a website, are you more likely to learn more about the company or look at what they offer first? I'm just curious. Maybe I'm weird, but I usually go to the contact page to see where they're located, <laughs> especially if it's a, you know, an in-person service, an in-person business. So many people hide their location and it's very frustrating. It also does no oh. good for their own SEO, but that's, that's another topic, but I might be the only weirdo that goes to the contact page in a lot of these places. I guess that's true. I think about it really, do you know what, Victoria, you're right. It does depend. Like I'm thinking about when I went to I don't know, the, the bird rescues where I got all of my parrots. <laughs> um, I probably looked at which birds were available before I looked at like who they were just to kind of see like, are there things, do they have what I offer? And then are they actually like a reputable company? So, huh, depends on what I need. If I need to get something repaired, I go to services first. Can they fix what's broken in my house? Interesting. <sighs> So I feel like the services page probably needs, it's on your homepage and your about page. That's where you're building a lot of your credibility. Um, so your homepage should do that enough so that someone like Anne can say, okay, I trust you enough. Could you maybe fix my stuff? <laughs> um, I feel like services is more of that logic, right? Services equals how do you logically fix my problem? Um, whereas blog stuff, I don't know, there are a lot of, I guess it depends on the blog. Hmm. Yeah, I need a graphic organizer for this one, I think, just because it's so individualized. There is no one way um, to really think about that. But I think that the key here is when you're on each page, if someone went from home to services, what would we want them to do next? So um, I highly recommend using block patterns to, to do this. So I'm going to edit this page, not the site because this is where we put our content. Um, you might start off your services page with a testimonial, right? And because this isn't like the primary purpose, um, you might look for something that is a little bit smaller um, than some of these enormous ones, right? So like something like this, this itty bitty little testimonial here. <laughs> Looks like those are from Twitter, but you could probably change that. Um, but you might start 
And I just copied that and I'm just pasting it in there. Um, this builds just a little bit of credibility here. Um, and there, there might be, you know, a different, <laughs> a different testimonial per service, perhaps. Um, what else could you use? What, what builds logic here? You've got lots of different options. I'm just going to see, like, if I were to look for services, is there, oh, there's 166 patterns found for services. So this patterns directory is really lovely. Um, so a lot of things people want to know, like what your services are at a glance, right? So you'll see a lot of things that are, are made with these different columns here, um, that you can, you can go through, um, there you go. Just like that. And now you can just start editing. Um, so I highly recommend doing that and thinking about, hey, how am I building my logic? How am I doing things? Um, how am I weaving these together? Um, but yeah, so that's that's basically the the whole point. Build your each page, build it with logic, credibility, and emotion. Make sure it's balanced. Make sure that you know what's important for each of your individual use cases. Um, yeah, so we had some user questions here. We were going to do some breakout rooms, so I just don't think there's time for that today. Um, so, the animations on this one either did I? Let's add an animation. There we go. Just really quickly. Um, so one person was asking, like, how do your links and navigation, like, how do they enhance your website? Um, so button blocks and cover blocks um, are really, really helpful to to do things with. So when you are building each page, I think that very well placed. Um, buttons are, are really important. So this, hey, get started here, uh, this read more button, like these are very, very carefully placed. There are calls to do that all up and down this homepage. So inviting people not only to, like you, you can find things up here and you can reorder them, but not only do you want buttons up here, you also want to place those buttons throughout your content, right? So make your photos look brilliant, get started. This might take me to my services page. Um, this down here, this read more, hey, this is, <laughs> uh, this would go to my about page. You want to add those throughout here. Um, and then, and Victoria, let's talk about your carousel in just a quick moment. Um, Someone also asked, hey, do you tend to build from scratch or with patterns? I usually recommend patterns just because it takes a lot of time. Um, so that block pattern directory, that's part of why we wanted to bring that up today is it's a lot easier to pick something, copy it, paste it, and then make it yours. Um, I'm actually going to skip to the end for this. Um, should I use a header or a setter? Because Victoria said, um, hey, I really... Like, is there a carousel? Is there a slider? Someone asked, should I use a header or a slider? Um, generally speaking, for accessibility purposes, um, it's generally better to use a header image that is generally unchanging, um, just because it's a lot easier to navigate. It doesn't change. It gives people um, with uh, cognitive disabilities um, something very solid to look at. If you do decide to have things, like if this image slid to another one and, or slid to another one after that, um, as long as it didn't constantly update on its own, it would probably be considered okay. Not amazing for accessibility, but as long as the buttons are clear um, and people can actually take their time to look at this, um, that is something to know about that. So, yeah. Um, another person asked, hey, how long should each page be? Um, you have to really consider your audience, right? So if you have a science-y website and the purpose of your website is to discuss like very in-depth things, your articles could be really long. If your primary target audience are, I don't know, parents of very young children, you know that their attention is probably, they've got like 30 seconds to look at a website before their attention is elsewhere. So you really have to consider your audience in all things. Um, yeah, so there was that. And then somebody also asked, how do you design for mobile versus desktop, which is whew, quite an advanced topic, but Catherine planned with me today. Um, there is a tool that has been created uh, several months ago um, that allows you to create dynamic content that allows you to see which blocks are visible and where. So there may be more versions or different ones, but this is one that can help you design on mobile as well. 
So I think it is really important to remember that the way that your website looks, um, let me go to a better example. The way that your website looks on a tablet uh, is very different than how it may look on a cell phone, apparently. Yeah, so you, you can kind of see how this stacks um, on top of each other or just shrinks. So playing with your screen size for things, um, you can definitely do that. You also have your view button. Where did that go? I lost it. There it is, um, where you can see the different sizing. So that plugin can help you see, hey, what's going on where um, and, and add spacers or remove them. So if you ask that question, that is the resource uh, for you there. Okay, cool. Any final questions or thoughts or takeaways that you have? Catherine or otherwise from today. Um, this was a lot today, but I think it's really it was a good discussion. Thank you all so much for stepping up and really bringing your, your thoughtful insight. We are all better for it. I would say my key takeaways are sure, logic, credibility, Emotional appeals, home pages for readers, about is for company or writers. Final takeaway really consider your audience in all things. So, those are my three takeaways. And I think with that, we will wrap up today. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Have a lovely one. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Bill, you just answered the question I had in my head of, of whether or not I should post this, and I will. All right. See you all later. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>